subject unto principalities and the powers to obey magistrates to be ready to every good work to speak evil of no man to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men for we ourselves also were sometimes foolish disobedient deceived serving divers lust and pleasures living in malice and envy hateful and hating one another but after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but, accord, uh, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Notice here verse number six, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Uh, let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful for this day. Lord, we're thankful for the breath of life, the health you've given us to come to your house this morning. Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, for uh, what we've already heard this morning, for the singing, for the testimonies that we've heard this morning, for answered prayers. Father, we just thank you and praise you, dear God, for your abundant blessing upon us. And Father, now as we look to your word this morning, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. Uh, Father, we are so thankful that the things that you offer to your children, uh, things that you offer, dear God, that they're done in abundance, uh, that they don't run out, that they never diminish. And Father, we are so thankful that you are a God of abundance, Amen. that there's plenty of blessing, plenty of joy, plenty of grace, uh, plenty of forgiveness to go around for all, dear Lord. And Father, I ask that you help me this morning as I preach. Lord, I pray that you strengthen my voice. I pray that you strengthen my legs and my lungs, dear Lord. Uh, give me strength, give me voice, uh, dear Lord, to be able to declare your word. And Lord, if there happens to be one here or one that watches this video that has never trusted thee as Lord and Savior, Father, I pray that you'd speak to their heart uh, this morning. Father, help them to realize that life is brief, dear Lord, and that eternity is forever. And Father, draw them to yourself, and I pray that they be saved before it's uh, eternally too late. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done. We thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. For it's in Jesus' name we do ask and pray these things. And amen. amen. And notice here in verse number five, the word of God tells us not by works of righteousness what we have done. Now there's a contention of people out there believe that if they just do enough good things, that God will allow them an entrance into heaven. Now, beloved, God's word makes it plain that our 
righteousnesses, if you will, our good works are nothing but filthy rags before the Lord. And we cannot do enough. We cannot work enough, do enough kind things to get into heaven. When people say, well, you know, I'm a good person and I do a lot of good things, I ask them, how do you know when you've done enough good? You know, will I give my money? Well, I appreciate that testimony. That's good. But what's the dollar amount? You know, you may be blessed with an abundance of wealth. This person may not be blessed with that much abundance of wealth. So you're telling me your cutoff line or their cutoff line is different from yours. You know, or I've done this for my neighbor or I've done this for an organization or I'm just a kind person and I help my neighbor out. All these things are good and proper, and I appreciate that testimony, but you're dependent on yourself and your works to get you into heaven. And beloved, the only work singular that God will ever accept is the work that Jesus Christ, His Son, did on the cross of Calvary. And it's up to us to by faith accept His work and what He done on the cross of Calvary, that's what allows us to get into heaven. Amen. And so the Bible makes it plain that our works will not get us into heaven. Now our works should be a result of regeneration and it should be a sign of the new birth. But I certainly hope you're not putting your trust in your works, but that you put your trust in Jesus Christ and His completed work of what He did on the cross of Calvary. And so the text tells us here, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. And that ought to sound familiar. That just goes along with the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, uh, verses 8, 9, and 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them and when God saves you and I he begins a work in us and he will perform it until the day of redemption and that's where good works come in God working in us and through us you see so don't get that confused. A lot of people have that doctrine uh, mixed up. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy. Aren't you thankful for the mercy of God this morning, church? I'll tell you what. You can make a, ma a man mad or make a woman mad, make an individual mad at you, and beloved, they'll, they'll wad you up like a piece of paper and throw you in a garbage can and will not extend any type of mercy to you. But I'm thankful for Jesus Christ and for His abundant mercy that He provides to each and every one of us. Because the Bible declares all of us guilty before the Lord. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. A beloved I commit sin each and every day. And beloved, there are some people that are bold enough and brassy enough to say that they don't commit sin during the day. Well, if you are good enough to go through one day and don't commit sin, the last part of that verse will get you for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. You've come short. You've missed the mark even though you may have had a good day in your own eyes, if you will. And so, uh, beloved, uh, the fact of the matter is, I know I missed the mark. I know I fall short of His glory each and every day. I know that I commit sins of omission and commission. You know, I, I'm sure that God has been aggravated with me. But you know what? If I come to the Lord with a contrite spirit, a broken heart, asking for forgiveness. He extends His abundant mercy to me 
yes. and forgives me. Amen. Now I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I thank God for that. Amen. Because if anybody ever had a right to wipe me up like a piece of paper right. and cast me to the side, it's God. Amen. But I'm thankful for His abundant mercy Amen. that if we'll repent and come to Him with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and ask for forgiveness, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And friend, if that's not mercy, I don't know what mercy is then. Amen. I thank God for His mercy. But according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Notice here in verse 6, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. A great verse right here. Uh, people talk to you about baptism, about works, about religion. Yeah. The only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ. There's not many ways to be saved. There's only one way to be saved, and that's through Jesus Christ. If you're putting your faith and trust in anything else, you're going to miss the mark. You know, uh, uh, the Bible tells us uh, that He is the straight gate, if you will. A straight gate. A straight line. A straight line consists of two points. The sinner and Jesus Christ. You add anything else to that, you no longer have a straight line. You have a triangle, a square, a pentagon, an oxagon. And that's what people try to do. Is they try to add to what Jesus Christ has already perfected and completed. Salvation is between you and Jesus Christ alone. Amen. You don't have to add anything to it. Amen. When Christ said it is finished, Amen. it was finished and He took care of it in its totality. Yeah. And so, beloved, we should be thankful, dear Lord, for His abundant mercy. Amen. Amen. Yes. For His abundant mercy. You know, the abundant life which is in Jesus Christ. You know, I used to think when I was out in the wilderness that I was having such a good time and was enjoying life till its fullest and done a lot of things that quite honestly I'm ashamed of. And I'm not going to stand here and try to glorify sin this morning. I will say this. The Bible does say this, that there is pleasures in sin, but only for a season. And beloved, I'd go to all these parties, all these get-togethers, all these events, all these venues. And you know what? I thought I was having the time of my life. But each time it took something more. It took something more exciting, something more dangerous, something more risky, something more sinful. And then even after that, it got to the point that after I committed these things and done these things, I would walk away and you would think that I would have been happy, that I'd been joyful, but I'd walk away with an emptiness inside. Yeah. You know, a void inside. And I left myself thinking, there has to be something more to life than this. Because the pleasure in sin is just for a season. It will not satisfy. And beloved, what I needed was to establish the correct type of relationship with my Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. And He'll give you living water. Amen. And you'll never thirst again. You will have an abundance of joy. You will have an abundance of peace. You will have an abundance of, of enjoying life like you've never experienced. You know, I thought I had to go uh, uh, to the ball game. I thought I had to go to the racetrack. I thought I had to go to the nightclubs to be happy and to have abundant joy. And when I'd leave those places, I would leave mad. I'd leave disappointed. I'd leave heartbroken. I'd leave asking myself, there has to be something else. And that something else that was missing was Jesus Christ. And there was something deep in my heart deep in my soul. You don't belong here. You don't need to be here. 
You shouldn't be here. You see. I know right now it's March Madness. I know right now people on Rocky Top, they're happy. Tennessee edged out a victory last night and everything. Well, praise God, hallelujah. You know, I said last Sunday, being a Tennessee fan is good for life in general. It teaches you how to deal with disappointment. You know, uh, but beloved, uh, I used to think uh, Tennessee had to win. The Miami Dolphins had to win. Bill Elliott had to win the race. And I used to think that these, when these things happened, that life was at its fullest. Well, guess what? Miami Dolphins didn't win a lot of ball games during the time that I enjoyed them. Bill Elliott didn't win a lot of races. Tennessee, they'd win one game and then they'd lose the next week. It's like being on a roller coaster, you know, an emotional train wreck. And I'm like, there's got to be something else better. Oh, there is. A life that is surrendered to Jesus Christ. Because when your life is surrendered to Jesus, and you realize that your sins have been forgiven, and you realize the abundance of blessing, forgiveness, and mercy that God has bestowed upon you, you won't care whether or not Tennessee won the game or not. You won't care where your race car driver finishes. You won't care if you win the lottery or not because you have it all. You have Jesus Christ. You have Jesus Christ. And the Apostle Paul said, whatsoever state that he was in, therewith he learned to be content with. And beloved, you may not have what somebody else has. And you may not have what the world has to offer. But bless God, if you've got Jesus and you've been saved, friends, you've got it all. And you don't need anything else. Amen. You don't need anything else. Uh, beloved, why shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And so, beloved, you can have all that the world has to offer, yeah. but you'll never have abundant joy. You'll never have abundant peace. And you surely won't have abundant mercy because the world don't care about you. Doesn't care what you're going through. Doesn't care what you're experiencing. You know, they don't care. But I'll tell you what, there is one that cares. There's one that loves you with an eternal love. And it's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. The abundant life through Jesus Christ. The Gospel of John chapter 10 verse number 10 tells us, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Yes. I am. And thank God He is that great I am. Amen. Yes. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You know, Jesus Christ wants us to enjoy this life and wants us to enjoy it abundantly. The happiest people on the planet right now should be you and I that have been blood-bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And yet, eight out of ten Christians that you come into contact with, they're bitter, they're angry, they're defeated, they're depressed, and they're discouraged. It's because they have forgotten the abundant life that has been offered to them through Jesus Christ. I have Christians tell me there's no way, preacher, you can live a Christian life in this world. And the Word of God tells us that yes, in this present world, y'all live on planet Earth, don't you? Well, we're on Earth, aren't we? All right, well, some of you might be from Mars, I don't know. But we're on Earth right now. We're on Earth right now. In this present world. You can live the Christian life. You can enjoy the abundant life. And you can enjoy a little bit of heaven on earth. And so, beloved, like Brother Mike was talking about in Sunday school, it basically comes down to a choice. To a choice. Whether or not you want to enjoy that abundant life and experience that abundant life. You know, we put God in a box. We limit God by our unbelief and our lack of faith. 
But the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 20, Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. God's able to do more than we can possibly imagine. Uh, beloved, we just simply need to ask God to pour out His blessing, trust God, obey God. Uh, beloved, walk with the Lord, and I'll tell you, you'll experience an abundant life. You, you, may, you may lose your job. You may get a pay cut. Somebody in your family may disappoint you. Your children may disappoint you. Your neighbor may disappoint you. But you'll have an abundance of joy because you're walking with the Lord and have the right attitude and the right outlook upon life. Psalm chapter 50 verses 10 and 11 tells us, For every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. I love it. When it comes to God's resources, when it comes to God's blessings, there is not a shortage, amen. amen. There is not a shortage. Uh, me and Christy yesterday went out to a local farm. And I went out there to get some onions and lettuce and everything. And uh, somebody was asking when the crop of strawberries was going to be coming in and everything. Well, uh, before they could answer, I went ahead and chimed in. I said, I'm going to tell you one thing. I said, I better not see a post later on today sold out of strawberries <laughs> and everything. I said, I don't want to see that post and everything. Well, the fact of the matter is, there's only so many strawberries out there. And you better get there bright and early if you want some good fresh strawberries. Because they ain't going to last forever. They're eventually going to sell out. They're eventually going to quit producing, you know. And so you got to rush out there and stand in line and risk life and limb just to get a gallon of strawberries sometimes. But you know, the fact of the matter is when it comes to God's blessings that He wants to pour out upon His children, I don't have to race Jimmy to get in line. I don't have to race Billy and Anthony or JB or Rick or Mike to get in line, you know. I, I try to help you out the best way I can. And I might be able to give you $5. But you get down toward the end of the line, you may not get $5. You might do well to get a nickel. Because just like those strawberries, my resources are limited. But you know what? JB can go through and hog up everything and say, I'm getting all this. And y'all would have to fend for yourself. You know, uh, we was out there last Saturday and, and, and the guy that owns his farm, he was just working himself frantically and he was only bringing back like five or six bundles of onions at one time. And there's about seven or eight people there. And he'd come in, he'd toss those onions on the table and man, those hands would go in there right like that. I'm like, man, I'm... I'm not going to get my arm broken over some onions and everything. And, and so this went on like four or five times. And this one guy just kept grabbing and grabbing. And I told Christy, I said, I'm getting ready to punch him in the mouth. I said, I said he's nothing but a hog. I said, there's other people up here like to have an onion and everything. You know, and I'm sitting there thinking, he's going to get all the onions and I'm going to be left out. I'm going to be upset. Well, when it comes to God Amen. and His resources, right. you can hog it up all you want to. Right. Yeah. Because when it's my turn to get in line, yeah. God's just got just as much to give me right. as He give you. And an abundance yes. that never diminishes. Amen. Right. Yeah. And so, beloved, don't ever forget that about God. Right. He has abundant blessing yeah. that He wants yeah. to pour out upon you. Aren't you thankful for abundant Amen. grace this morning, church? Yeah. I mentioned this just a little bit earlier. I'm so thankful for that abundant grace. You know, where, where our sin abounded, His grace did much more abound. Amen. Yeah. Aren't you thankful for God's abundant grace? Amen. The Bible tells us 
in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 14. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. A lot of people ask me about, well, how did you know when God called you to, to preach? How did you know to get into the ministry? You know, and I say, well, you know, it's just something that you know when God speaks to your heart. But I'll tell you one reason that God put me in the ministry is he saw that I was faithful. When the doors were open, I was at church. When there was something to be done, I was there offering myself, making myself available. No, I don't have a PhD. No, I don't have a doctorate. But one thing you can't say, hey, that guy's faithful. Amen. That guy's faithful. Amen. You know, Apostle Paul said, Jesus Christ, uh, excuse me, let me find my place here again. Uh, uh, and I thank Christ Jesus, the Lord, who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before. Yeah. Did you get that? Who was before, past tense. He ain't doing that now. He's repented. There's been a change. I follow a couple of forums on Facebook, and sometimes I get to the point where I want to unsubscribe or quit following them because it becomes a platform for argument and debate. And I just don't want to read that and get caught up in all that. But I've seen an awful lot of posts about repentance. And uh, beloved, uh, the word repentance comes from the Greek word metanoia, and it basically means to have a change in mind or a change in attitude or a change of direction. But there's a lot of different beliefs about repentance out there, and so forth and so on, and that's not the message for the hour and everything. But I will say this much. When a person truly gets regenerated and gets born again, old things are passed away Behold, all things have become new. And beloved, there's a lot of times when you go through and study the Scripture, the Apostle Paul talks about the old man and talks about the old man in past tense, just like we read right here. Let me tell you something. Even though the word repent's never used, the definition of it is. And to sit there and try to justify an unchanged life and an unrepentant heart is to make a mockery yeah. of the work of what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Uh, beloved, a conversion takes place. Salvation takes place. A change takes place. And these people that can go out here and dope it up, drink it up, fornicate it up, and gamble and drink and say that they're saved, they better check out their heart for salvation. There's something terribly amiss. And at the end of the day, I'm going to take God's word over what you've got to say. I don't care how good of a friend you are. I don't care how sincere you are. God cannot lie. God cannot lie. And so, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy. Woo! Praise God. That's good. That's good. I'm thankful I can stand before the Lord. Amen. And I can stand before you today. Yeah. I have obtained mercy. Yes. Yes. Abundant mercy. Yes. And you should rejoice in the mercy that God's offered you yes. and given you. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorant of the unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, tells us, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. We see here, why Paul was given the thorn in the flesh because of the abundance of revelations. There were truths that God gave Paul that he didn't give to the other apostles. It'd been easy to get the big head. I know something you don't know. 
I'm special. God shared something with me he didn't share with you. He must like me better. It'd been easy to get the big head, wouldn't it? And notice here. He said, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, talking about abundant grace, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. No matter what you're going through in life, no matter what tribulation, what trial, what storm you're going through, Amen. God's grace right. will be sufficient for you. Right. And there will be an abundance of it for you yeah. when you need it. Yeah. You go through and study the different types of graces in the Bible. One that comes to mind, dying grace. Yeah, I believe it. Acts, Stephen. He, he said, he told, he told the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, the religious people, you're the one who caused Jesus Christ to die. His blood is on your hands. He right. made that religious crowd mad. Yeah. They grabbed him, drug him out in the streets, and stoned him to death. And what does the Bible record about Stephen's death? Yeah. He fell asleep. He wasn't crying out in agony. That's exactly right. He wasn't in pain. I've always said that. God give him dying grace. Amen. God give him dying grace. A lot of different types of graces in the Bible. Abundant joy. Aren't you thankful for abundant joy? First Peter chapter 1, verses 7 through 8 tells us that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, and whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'll tell you what, I was excited last night in Tennessee 1. Now I wouldn't even watch the game. And I'm like, it was 10.30, and I'm like, that game would have been over with by now. It must be going down to the wire. It may be an overtime. And so I didn't want to turn the channel because Christy was watching the show I was watching. So I picked up the phone. I typed in NCAA scores. And I found Tennessee in Texas. It's 58-55 with 10 seconds to go. I said, oh, boy, who's got the ball? And I couldn't resist the temptation. There's a little button that says live. So I hit live. And the game pulled up. And Christy said, ain't that game on TV? And I said, yeah. But I said, I didn't want to watch them get beat. And I said, it's going down to the wire. They ain't but 10 seconds left. I'm going to watch the rest of this. And so connected a couple of three throws. Texas come down, hit a three. They fouled to connect again. He had a couple of free throws. And the final score was 62-58. Now, I was happy. I was happy about that and everything. I, I am a Tennessee fan. I do like to see them win. I'm just used to them losing. And so when they win, I feel good about it and everything. But you know what? I can still have joy this morning if Tennessee would have got beat because of God's abundant mercy, His abundant love, his abundant grace. Yeah. See, a lot of our happiness in this life, we, we, put, we put the emphasis on the temporal and the physical. That's why it doesn't last. Because it is temporal. But when we talk about God's grace and God's love and God's mercy, it's eternal. And there's, it's not dependent upon whether Tennessee wins or loses or whether or not things are going our way or not. It's because of his character and who he is. And he's an unchanging God. And that's tonight's message, the unchanging Christ. Give me a little bit of a heads up. And two more things and I'll finish up. An abundant mercy. Abundant mercy. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy 
hath begotten us again to a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If that's not a resurrection verse, I don't know what is. He's a living hope. A lively hope this morning. He's alive forevermore. He sits at the right hand side of the Father making intercession for you and I. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. You know, we'll stand at the judgment seat of Christ and we'll receive rewards for what we have or have not done for Jesus Christ. But outside of those rewards, there's an inheritance that awaits us. An inheritance. Isn't that good? God takes care of us all the way around. God takes care of us abundantly. Abundantly. And again, here's, here's the verse right here for those that think you can lo lose your salvation. You didn't do anything to earn it. And you certainly don't do anything to keep it. Verse number 5. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God. Amen. That's right. God is the one that does the saving. Amen. And oh by the way, God's the one that does the keeping. Amen. So you don't lose it. You don't misplace it. Who are kept by the power of God through faith and the salvation. Ready to be revealed to the last time. Romans chapter 5, verse number 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Thank God for that. And the last of all, the abundant entrance. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. I can imagine those Old Testament prophets. You know, when they penned Scripture, to a certain degree it had to be confusing to them because they wrote of His death, yeah. but they also wrote of His glory. How can that be? His death, but yet He's going to be alive and yeah. we're writing about His glory. Yeah. You know. We look back to the cross. It's easy for us to comprehend. Yeah. But Christ hadn't even right. hadn't even been born hadn't yet. Been right. They were looking to the cross. Yeah. They were looking to the cross, you see. Who prophesied of the grace that should come into you. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. An abundant entrance. Yeah. All you need, all that is sufficient yeah. is Jesus Christ. Don't need, don't need to add on works. Don't need to add on religion. Don't need to add on all this. Yeah. He has an abundant entrance. Yeah. It's sufficient. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, aren't you thankful that God is a God of abundance this morning, church? Amen. Aren't you thankful? Well, that's all I have for us this morning. And at this time, I'd like to invite you to stand. Everyone's standing, everyone's heads bowed, everyone's eyes closed.